Hi folks, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Michael Lau. Most of you will know me for my photography perhaps, but during lockdown I'm not doing an awful lot of photography so I thought I might put down some recipes. This is something I've been wanting to do for a long time now so I've got the time, the opportunity, let's go for it. Today we are going for the daddy of them all, crispy chili beef. Crispy chili beef is the Chinese cuisine, what chicken tikka masala is the Indian cuisine and it's a real crowd pleaser and it's quite simple to make. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So what you're gonna need for this recipe is some beef, some light soy sauce, some dark soy sauce, some ginger, a little bit of sugar, a bit of onion, salt, pepper, one egg, a couple of cloves of garlic, a real Chinese staple, some ketchup, some brown sauce, some honey, a bird's eye chili or something similar, and some corn flour. So guys, let's get started. Right guys, let's start with the beef. Um, <clears throat> this is the cut of beef I'm using today. I'm using this which has been cut from a roasting joint. Uh, you can use whatever you've got in your fridge. Uh, you can use steak, uh, which is a little bit of an overkill for this dish, um, but something cut off a cheap cut of, 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 of a roasting joint will be fine. Normally if you were to pan fry this, it would be really tough, but because we're cutting it into thin strips and frying it, it will be nice and tender by the time we finish with it, okay? So this is about 350 grams of beef. It will feed, I don't know, three or four people, I should imagine. So what we're going to do is take a sharp implement and start cutting it like this into thin little strips to start with. Okay. Now, as I was saying before, crispy chili beef is one of those kind of legendary dishes, right? You'll get it served in Chinese takeaways and restaurants, but you'd be hard pushed to find it in Hong Kong or China because it's one of those invented dishes um, it combines everything that we like in food, crispiness and a bit of sweet and sour. The sauce is kind of like, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's sort of advanced sweet and sour. It's, got a, it's like a sweet and sour sauce, but with some nice undertones to it, which is where we're going to be using the garlic and the ginger and the chilies, you see. Um, so when you usually have sweet and sour sauce from a takeaway or a restaurant, it's generally just... Um, sugar and vinegar, whereas this is going to have a more of a depth of flavour, hopefully. And it goes really nicely, it cuts through the, the beef and the, and the batter. So right, what we're going to do, that's, we get these strips here. You could leave it like this, but what we're aiming for is strips a little bit like that. Okay, so these we can go through again, maybe once, maybe twice. I guess crispy chili beef is one of those um, comfort foods almost. It's, uh, it's got everything you want in a dish, really, I feel. Uh, it's not something you could have every day. It's, it's definitely not good for you. But a little bit of what you fancy always does you good, as the saying goes. Okay, right. So that's what we want to do with the beef. Okay. So the next thing, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, marinate the beef. Right, guys, I left an ingredient off the initial list. Um, sesame oil. Forgot the sesame oil. This is for the marinade. What we're going to do now is add a teaspoon of sesame oil to the beef. We're going to add two to three tablespoons of light soy sauce. I'm going to guesstimate this, but you feel free to measure. That's about right, I think, but a little bit more. There we go and a teaspoon of sugar. And we're gonna lightly massage this. Mm. 
into the beef until it's all nicely covered. You could do this the night before if you wanted to, um, but with this kind of recipe, because the, the flavors of the sesame oil and the soy sauce are quite strong, you don't have to. You can do it just before you start if you want to. Okay. And the next thing we're gonna do is get your egg. And we're gonna break that into the meat. Now what this will do is help it bind with the corn flour so that the corn flour coats the beef nicely. Okay, so we've got that nicely mixed. You can see it's nicely wet. And we're gonna get our corn flour. <clears throat> and to that, excuse me for a second. We're going to put a nice big pinch of salt and pepper. This is where the saltiness, the seasoning goes into this dish. Okay, so it's a nice big twist of both. Now, the corn flour, we're using corn flour because that gives us a nice cr uh, crisp coating. You could use plain flour, but I think that might give us a little bit more of a, a chewy batter and we don't want that. Another good alternative is potato starch if you can get it. Uh, either of these will be uh, good, corn flour or potato starch. Um, there's not an exact measurement here. There's about, I just imagine there's about 300, 250 to 300 grams here. And that seems a lot to cover this amount of meat, but what, what, why we need this amount of flour is because once we put all that in, we're just gonna massage it in and then it'll start to, It'll start to be all kind of congealed and stuck together, but as you work it, the strands of beef will work itself out. And so it'll automatically come loose again, which is really nice. So you need more flour than you probably think you need to achieve that. It's not an exact measurement because um, how much you need is kind of a little bit arbitrary, but um, <clears throat> you definitely need more than you, you know, more is better than too little in this case. So what we're gonna do is empty this in like so and then we're gonna work it in. Okay, all we're doing is just mixing and mixing and getting everything coated. As you can see, it's starting already to come out in strips because as the flour is coating around each strip, it stops sticking to the next piece of meat, which is what we want. It's like dusting really, and it is very different from sort of the flour you normally get in a, in a fish and chip batter or anything like that, or even a, uh, a pork ball or a chicken ball. This is much lighter. And it's really nice. You can see every strip is coming out. Right guys, so we're gonna start with the sauce now. Um, to begin with, we're going to use the holy trinity of ingredients for Chinese cooking. Ginger, garlic and chilli. Okay. Um, because it's locked down, we don't seem to have any fresh ginger. So luckily, uh, Yvonne, my wife, keeps frozen ginger in the freezer. And for this, purposes of this recipe is actually perfect because um, we're not requiring any texture from, from the ginger itself, and this will kind of just melt into the sauce. The reason, gin, ginger is one of those things where you probably won't taste it in the actual sauce. It'll become kind of one of those background notes uh, that you always hear about, but it, it, if you don't use it, you will miss something. But um, because it's frozen, doesn't leave us at a disadvantage. So if you've got frozen ginger, you can use that. Um, but I'd rather have fresh, but we don't have any. And so that's already kind of prepared. I don't have to do anything like that. All I did was defrost it and it's kind of become a bit mush. So that's, that's okay, All right? So the next ingredient is the garlic. So we're gonna to top and tail the garlic. And skin it. Garlic is one of my favorite ingredients. I pretty much use it in everything that's savory. Just cut away that part a little bit there. Get rid of that. A little bit more. Uh, 
and we're going to go for a kind of fine die. So we're going to go across it first and then go back like that. The same here. fine as we can, that's okay. This is why I like to use meat cleavers. Um, this size is perfect because it's not too massive, but you can use it to scoop things up, it's great. So we're gonna put that into the, gar uh, into the ginger. And then a chili. This is a bird's eye chili, but use whatever you want to use or whatever you've got. So cut away the stalk. You can use more chilies if you want. Um, it's up to you how hot you want to make it. This is about right for me. It's kind of like a medium hot. It's a bird's eye chili, which is quite hot anyway. I'm gonna keep the seeds in. I'm kind of a medium when it comes to the hotness. I don't like it if it's way too hot because I just can't eat it. But if it's, you know, a little bit too mild, you, you're basically eating the sweet and sour. So I'm just gonna finally chop this. Yeah, because a lot of the heat is in the seeds, guys, if you didn't know that already. But I'm going to keep those because it's okay. And it's up to you. Um, I would not advise touching your eyes after you've chopped a chilli or anything else that's delicate, to be fair. So be careful. Wash your hands. That's something we know a lot about these days, isn't it? Washing our hands. Here's another reason. Okay, and uh, to complement that, we're also going to put some onion in. It's about, I don't know, quarter of an onion here. Just going to finely slice that. This is weird. I've never actually chopped in front of the camera before. So hopefully we're not going to have any added fingers into this recipe. So I'm going to pop this into here. That's going to make the base of our sauce. And um, will give us a very nice depth to the flavour to kind of complement the sweet and sour of the of the sauce, which is um, the overpowering bit, if you like. This this will just give it some nice depth and undertones to it, and it'll just make it a little bit more unctuous, I think the word is. I like that word, unctuous. I just like saying the word unctuous. It's great, unctuous. Okay, uh, we're ready to fry, deep fry our beef now. So I've got the pan of oil on. This is just normal cooking oil. Um, it's about a third full, which is what it should be. It shouldn't be more than half full, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to do the fizz test with a wooden chopstick to see if that's, yep, that started to fizz. So we know we're at about 180 degrees Celsius or centigrade, whichever it is. And that's about the right temperature to cook our beef. Um, we're probably going to do a double fry because um, <clears throat> That'll give us a crispier result. So that, what that means is we're going to fry it, take it out, and then fry it again. That sounds a bit weird, but what happens is if you try to do it all in one go to make it crispy, there's a chance because you've got it really hot that you will make the outside really crispy, but the inside, the beef, might be still raw in the middle. So what this will give us is a chance to cook it again to make sure that the heat gets through to the middle. Okay. And it will give us a nice crispy result. Because, uh, because we need the high heat to make it crispy at all, um, we can't fry it for very long, otherwise it'll burn. Okay, Whoop, there we go. Mm -hmm. Just turn it down a little bit. We might have to do it in two batches because we've got quite a lot of beef here. Let's see how we go. Yeah, two batches. We don't want to overload the oil because A, we might spill over and B, um, it'll cool down the oil too much so we won't get the crispy effect. So we'll do it in two, two batches. You can see it's coming. You'll see the uh, familiar texture of chili beef coming through. Oh, we have, a, we have an interloper. Hi, Kobe. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> Are you watching your film? Yeah, go watch your film then. Good boy. So, literally for one or two minutes. 
So you can see that familiar texture coming through, but we haven't got, you know, the dark colour of it yet. That's because this is a first fry. So here we go. But you can you can tell it's it's going to be crispy. This is this is looking nice. So we'll just let the oil get up to temperature. We'll do the second batch quickly. <clears throat> let we cover. Yeah, if we put it all in one go, it'll end up being soggy, it won't be crispy at all because the oil will lose its temperature and if you don't have the temperature, then you won't have the crispiness. And we, we're all about the crispiness. Yeah, otherwise we call it soggy chili beef. Not quite the same ring to it, has it really? <clears throat> right, here we go. So again, just a minute or two, just to get the batter to start getting crispy. Because the strips are quite thin, it won't take long at all to cook anyway. So we've got some leeway. Um, what I like when I make it is actually to, to have some texture of the meat in. I know I've been to um, some restaurants and takeaways before where all you can really feel is the texture of the batter. And I'm thinking, I have to ask myself, is there any beef in that? Hmm. So this is the way I like it. Okay. <clears throat> Coming out there. Of course, you can do this with other meats. You can do it with chicken. You can do it with pork. You could even do it with lamb, I suppose, but that seems to be a fairly expensive way of doing it. Um, yeah, beef is my favorite. Beef is definitely my favorite. Okay. Right. So, now we've cooked it the first time, or fried it the first time, we're gonna set it aside for a second and we're gonna do the sauce. Okay, so bear with me. Right guys, onto the sauce. So what we're gonna do is we'll add some oil to the wok, just ordinary cooking oil. Um, don't use sesame oil or olive oil because their flash point's too low. Um, you'll burn it before you can cook in it. And we're gonna add the onion, the chili, the garlic and the ginger, which we were preparing earlier, into the pan as the oil gets hotter. And we'll just get a nice little sizzle out of that. <clears throat> and this is when I wish we had smell -a vision because this smells amazing. So we're just kind of frying this off making sure that we are starting to get the flavors out of all these aromatics. The onions also give you a little bit of texture to the sauce, I always find. Um, the, what we don't want to do really is to completely melt the onions. We want it to keep some of its texture. <clears throat> it also, because there's some Sort of, there's more things in there. It'll help stop the garlic and the ginger from burning as well, which is useful, I find. Right, so the next step is to, let me grab a spoon. Let's grab one of these spoons, right. <clears throat> one, another ingredient I left off the initial <laughs> ingredients a list is vinegar. Um, I'll put it all down below anyway, so you won't miss it. But I've got some rice vinegar here. Um, you can use anything you like, malt vinegar, white vinegar. It all works um, with different, you can, you can get some dark um, Chinese vinegars, Asian vinegars if you like, but it's not absolutely necessary. I wouldn't recommend balsamic um, because that's probably a bit too sweet and we want some sharpness to go with the, um, the sweetness of this sauce. So. Um, this, this works really well. Rice vinegar. 
So I'm going to put I'm going to put three tablespoons approximately. This is all approximate. You can adjust this to your taste. There is no right or wrong answer. Only what tastes good and what doesn't taste good. Okay. And we're going to add to that the traditional ingredient, ketchup. There's about uh, three tablespoons of ketchup. We have another interloper. Hi, Kobe. Uh, about two tablespoons of brown sauce. Daddy's, HP, Tesco's, as the brand, doesn't matter. It's all good. And about three tablespoons, two or three tablespoons of honey. You can use sugar syrup. Uh, I like honey because well, it's honey, it's nice. It just gives a nice, different kind of sweetness, I find, which is nice. Syrup, syrup works really well too, not a problem. Um, gives a little bit more of a stickiness to it as well. <clears throat> and to finish off, <laughs> that's our boy. Um, about half a spoonful of the dark soy sauce. Hello, Toby. Okay. <laughs> And we put that together and we give it a stir and we heat it up. <clears throat> Come over here then. Okay. I need to finish with this. Okay. So as you can see, we're getting a kind of quite concentrated sauce. When we're actually um, putting the meat in, what you'll end up is not like um, a sweet and sour Hong Kong style where you get copious amounts of sauce. What you're getting really is a kind of sticky coating of the sauce. That's what it should be. It should be sweet, it should be sharp, it should be spicy with the chilli, uh, with the undertones of the garlic, which is delicious and unctuous, and the ginger. And my mouth is watering already. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, there's not a huge amount of sauce. It is a copious, if, if you want to make more sauce, you can add some more of the wet ingredients. You can, if, if you kind of um, scale up everything with an extra spoonful of everything else, then you'll get similar kind of flavors uh, with more sauce. Um, that's, that's, that's your choice. I like it where it's just coating it nicely. Okay, so there we go. That's our sauce kind of ready now. Right, we're ready for the second fry of our beef. So we've got it here. The oil is nice and hot again, and we're just gonna pop it in. And this is why you can tell it's not an everyday recipe. This is special occasions and cheat days, definitely. And if we put it in for one or two minutes. Cool. Of course, if you have any questions or queries about the recipes, then please leave them in the comments section below. Please let me know when you try this yourself, how you get on. Um, be nice to see some pictures before you eat them. But if you can, if you if you keep this, if you follow my instructions, it's it's pretty simple. Cool. So I think it's just about done now. So we're going to turn the heat off, and we're going to scoop it out again. And it's really nice and crispy now. I can see. The colours there, the textures there. And of course, we don't want to completely dry out the beef anyway, because we want some. You know, it's got to be beefy. If you overcook it, it'll just become as if you're just eating the batter. Oh, can you hear that sizzle? Can you hear that sizzle? That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, the secret to Chinese. Cooking, or secret, it's not a secret, it's just the way that we do things is you wouldn't necessarily have this all to yourself, although I'm sure some of us might want to. And it's to make a few different dishes and serve it up between family and friends and have a bit of everything. Therefore, it doesn't become such an issue with the health thing. There's a lot of sugar in this, it's deep fried. Um, 
you know, it, it doesn't take a genius to work out that it's not the healthiest dish in the world. However, like I said, everything in moderation. If you were to share this family, four, five, six people with some healthy greens and some fish and some other dishes, then you have a little bit of everything. It's lovely, delicious, and you get a range of different flavors and textures and some vitamins too. That always helps. Right. So we've twice fried our beef. The sauce is ready. So what we're going to do now is get the sauce at the temperature. which will take a minute. <clears throat> yeah, this is one of those dishes that... <clears throat> Making some dinner, would you like some dinner? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is one of these dishes that transcends all generations. People like it, young and old, kids love it. Probably with a little less chili. <clears throat> okay. It's starting to sizzle now. And the next step is to pour it in. And to give it a bit of a shake, see it coating, it's coating and not, and not so, making it soggy, it's just keeping the crispness. So we're trying to get some sauce on everything and there you go. And so we shall dish it up. Here. And you could garnish it with some spring onion if you so wish, just to add a little bit of greenery to it. But there you go. I wish you could smell it. Crispy chili beef. So yeah, try it yourself. Uh, let me know how you get on, if you like it, if there's anything else you want to ask me about this. And uh, if you want me to try any other recipes or any other dishes, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to accommodate, okay? Thank you for watching, very grateful, and stay safe. Couldn't go without letting you hear what it tastes like. Mm. That's pretty good. I would serve it with, excuse me, boiled rice. But you can have it with egg fried rice, whatever you want. Just don't have it with chips. <laughs>